ruling first and probably sublime all here he did for the glory shall not fail through our eternity. Amen. Let us follow the order for the administration of the Lord's Supper. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of Thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love Thee and worthily magnify Thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gospel Summary Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all this the laws in our hearts. We beseech Dear people of God, the theme for our meditation today is People of God, Flock of Christ. People of God, Flock of Christ. Let us pray. Ever gracious God, our parent, how amazing is your grace that you choose us as your people and save us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Enable us to be ever conscious of your calling, to be an inclusive community that is nurtured by the love of Christ. Guide us through your tender love to be in the flock of Christ and radiate your love and mercy to the people around. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns as the Good Shepherd, with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. The scripture portions will be read to us.
reading from the epistle uh lesson of bible from psalms 95 reading from psalms 95 request the congregation please stand for the responsive reading psalms 95 o come let us sing to the lord let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. The sea is his for he made it and the dry land which his hands have formed. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture. and the sheep of his hand when your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof they had seen my work let us read the last word together therefore in my anger i swore they shall not enter my rest thanks be to god old testament lesson is taken from genesis chapter 35 verses 1 to 15 Genesis chapter 35 verses 1 to 60 15 Then God said to Jacob Arise go up to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the place face of Esau your brother And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him Put away the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourselves and change your garments. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the, in the day of my distress and has been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods. which were in their hands and the earrings which were in their ears and Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree which was by Shechem and they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob so Jacob came to Luz that is Bethel which is in the land of Canaan he and all the people who were with him and he built an altar there and called the place el bethel because there god appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother now debora rebecca's nurse died and she was buried below bethel under the terebinth tree so the name of it was called alan bachut Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Paddan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, "Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob any more, but Israel shall be your name." So he called his name Israel. Also, God said to him, "I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply." a nation and company of nations shall proceed from you and kings shall come from your body the land which i gave abraham and isaac i give to you and to your descendants after you i give this land then god went up from him in the place where he talked with him so jacob set up a pillar in the place where 
he talked with him a pillar of stone and he poured a drink offering on it and he poured oil on it and jacob called the name of place where god spoke with him bethel here ends the lesson epistle reading is taken from the book of acts chapter 26 verses from 11 to 15 i repeat the book of acts chapter 6 26 verses from 11 to 15 and i punish them often in every synagogue and compel them to bless for me and being exceedingly enraged against them I persecuted them even to foreign cities while they were occupied I was journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest at midday o king along the road I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me and when we all had fallen to the ground I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the hebrew language saul saul why are you persecuting me it is hard for you to kick against the goats so i said who are you lord and he said i am jesus whom you are persecuting amen praise be to the lord let us all rise for the gospel reading The gospel reading is taken from the gospel according to St John chapter 10 verses 1 to 6 Glory be to thee O Lord St John chapter 6 verses 1 to 6 Very truly I tell you Anyone who does not enter the sheep fold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out <coughs> when he has brought out of his own out of all his own he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice they will not follow a stranger but they will return they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers jesus used this figure of speech with them but they did not understand what he was saying to them Here ends the gospel reading. Thanks be to thee, O Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of and on earth and all folk things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God begotten of His Father before all worlds god of god light of light worthy god of worthy god be god 
not me being a one substance with the father by whom all things were me who for us man and for us salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us on the point of Pilate he suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and the sender in to him and said to the right hand of the father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end and i believe in the holy ghost the lord of the of life who proceeded from thy father and the son who were the father and the son to gather his worship and glorify who speak by the prophets and I believe one Catholic and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to morning church greetings to you in the matchless name of our god and savior jesus christ we would like to welcome both the online as well as offline viewers if you are attending for the first time kindly meet us and interact with us at the coffee fellowship the service timing has been changed kindly note the service timing is at 8:30 am from the last week we regret to inform the demise of professor jacob george father of george jacob our organist who passed away peacefully on 13 7 and the burial took place on the same day kindly uphold the family in your prayers and uphold them regularly the speaker for today is mrs reverend sindhu basi paul who is familiar to all of us and who did her bd from gurukul lutheran theological college mth from utc new testament 
Presently, Pastor Ma is doing her doctoral studies on the book of Revelation. Thank you, Pastor, for accepting our invitation, and we look forward to interact with you. The offertory details of the last week is as follows: General offertory eighteen thousand eighteen thousand two hundred and ten. Thanksgiving six thousand six hundred. Subscription nine thousand six hundred. Sunday school four hundred and ninety. And auctions two thousand eight hundred, totaling to thirty seven thousand seven hundred. Thirty seven thousand seven hundred. Kindly give your names to Mrs. San- Mr. Sanjay Madhukar as we are planning for a family retreat on thirty first July. Those who are interested, immediately after the service, we are going for a family retreat, and the venue is going to be decided in a day or two. we would like to inform you those who are married kindly make it a point to have a separate subscription separate membership card kindly fill the form and give it at the subscription table today's fellowship breakfast is sponsored by mrs telma swarnakumari thank you and kindly uphold all the student those who are writing their neat examination today many people are writing kind of uphold all the student those who are writing the neat examination thank you I publish the marriage bans between Nikhil Abhishek Paul son of Mrs Thelma Swarnakumari and late Mr Sunit Paul with Ms Shweta Jaiswal daughter of Mr Gulabchandra Jaiswal members of our church this is the first ban if any one of you is having any valid objection as to why these two should not be married please give it in writing to the presbyter in charge this is the first ban kindly uphold the uh, two families especially the about to be married couple to in your daily prayers dear people of god as it is been announced that the family retreat uh, which is supposed to be held on 31st as 31st july is family sunday so we request you all to kindly uh, give your names to our treasurer mr sanjay madhuka for the family retreat as it is a tradition in our church immediately after service we would all move towards the designated place and we would have family retreat there so i request all our congregation members to kindly come forward and partake in this family retreat on 31st july 2022 as this would be a time where we spend much time in prayer and knowing each other and having some of the activities so once again i request all the congregation members to kindly uh, enroll or enlist their names for this uh, family retreat thank you i also like to welcome uh, reverend john basi paul aigaru who is the auxiliary secretary of telangana uh, bible society of india he is also worshiping with us this morning on behalf of the entire congregation we warmly welcome you and acknowledge your presence with us this morning and we are indeed glad to have pastor mrs sindhu basi paul amma as uh, she has recently finished her doctoral program and is in the final process of submitting her thesis indeed we are glad to have you amidst us on behalf of the entire fa- congregation we warmly welcome you into our midst to share the word of god thank you
let us continue to praise god by singing hymn number 260 hymn number 260 may be please seated <coughs> greetings to one and all in the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ i thank the lord for giving me at another opportunity to stand before you with the living word of god i also extend my heartfelt thanks to pastor uh, reverend uh, solomon ayer and uh, also the pastorate committee members the church for giving me this opportunity to share the word of god before we meditate the word of god let's look to the lord in prayer gracious lord we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us to be in your presence with your word as we meditate upon this word let the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable to you o lord our rock and our redeemer amen it's always good to be back to the church and feel at home and i am happy that as family we could come to the church today 
and also to share from the word of god the theme people of god flock of christ i think it talks about some belongingness that means you belong to someone or some group in the same way it the theme operates for a collective identity or a collective responsibility or a collective duty that you can find from the theme itself we know that most of us uh, have heard there are people who used to add their names uh, along with their family name or a profession or their profession or their place name that's how they try to show their identity or you belong to so and so family or you come from so and so place particularly in kerala we do have that sometimes with the family name you identify that okay you come from so and so family background or you are coming from if you are quite famous some people add to their name their place name so you belong to so and so place so the collective identity or it talks about you belongingness you belong to some something or some group or some place similarly the people of god the flock of christ the same theme also talks about your belongingness you belong to some group or some place or your it is your collective responsibility that the theme exhibits and it also talks a uh, social responsibility as when it says from the term people of god flock of christ it also talks about collective responsibility or it is our collective duty or it also talks about our collective faith the faith the way how we enrich each other coming back to the red passages today i would like to share few thoughts from the the passages that has been read before us the first passage that which we read was the old testament passage from from the life of jacob i think uh, we all of us know about jacob who was always on a race a race that from the birth that you find him he was holding his brother's leg and when he comes out from his mother's womb and later you find he was on a race where he uh his competitive spirit obviously the involvement of uh parents are obviously there but i don't want to talk about that that is an another thing it talks about the responsibility of a father or mother but as a person jacob when you take he was on the race and his race becomes sometimes our race when it becomes very competitive there is a danger if you don't draw the line there is a danger in harming the other person i think uh, that's what exactly even in the life of jacob happened so he has he even uh, took off the birth right of his own brother obviously even when you see the passage of isau there we can also interpret it in different way but at the same time there are several failures that you find as jacob as a person when you find in his life even from after that you find him fleeing to uh, the place in fear of his brother and later where god appeared to him and we know the story of how jacob was stopped by god in a dream where he was when he was sleeping the place where he called it as bethel and coming back again like the present passage also talks back the from the place where he went off he again coming back to the same place god asked him to come to bethel and build an altar there so the space of altar that is the first point that i would like to share why jacob was asked to depart from the place and we find there a person with a lot of failures and he deceived his brother at the same time he was also deceived by his own uncle we can find him how he was in laban's house for a long period of time obviously the life of jacob was full of failures deceptions 
but at the same time when god saw him the fear that in him god talked to him in the place of bethel and asking him giving him the promise and he is the one who named the place bethel and actually it was called luz but the same jacob has forgotten everything and then the promise is what he got and he left over there and now we find in the previous passage if you see they were in shechem where again jacob was in danger where his sons have massacred a lot uh, many people in shechem and he was in fear he was in in that desperate condition again god spoke to jacob that you go back to bethel build an altar there build a space of altar there and that is what expected from the people of god flock of christ where we have several failures we have several deceptions but at the same time god asked to turn back to the place when you find in jacob's life he's uh, god is asking him to depart from shechem the place where and he is giving a new direction for him where he has to go to bethel and that has completely changed his destination and this is also similar to some of us all of most of the time and uh, more, uh, some of us we are will be always stuck with a place sometimes we are stuck with our money sometimes we are stuck with our position sometimes we are stuck with the the comfort that we have the comfort zone that we have and then we forget about the promise what we have made but the life of jacob also talks to us that God doesn't want us to be stuck or stagnated to something but he wants us to be a stream where we flow as a river flows and that is what exactly in Jacob's life also had he was having stuck with this lot of things with the failures deceptions though he got the promise in the bethel but he completely forgot about the promise what he had and they gave god is asking to change the, dire- uh, the to depart from shechem and go to a new direction and that can change your destination but when jacob wants to go there are certain conditions that we have to look into when you are changing your direction or when it has to change your destination there are certain thing what we have to leave out what we are stuck with what we are stagnated with there are certain things that we need to leave out in life and that's what exactly god spoke to jacob put away your foreign gods purify yourself and change your clothes i think put away your foreign gods for jacob it was as they run i think rachel and his children also were part of it and we find rachel take the gods of her father and being with it it's a like if you find in the like uh, jacob's life as the he- leader of the family he took the re- when god spoke to him he took the responsibility in sharing to his family what is not acceptable to god put away it and then purify yourself change your clothes or put on the new garment the garment if you see throughout the bible it mainly talks about your conduct or your character and if you can draw back to ephesians chapter 4 where you exactly find it at how it need to have a change and in jacob's life also he took when god spoke to him irrespective of his failures irrespective of his deceiving nature when he was in danger when he was in fear when god spoke to him he accepted what god talked to him and he shares to his family put away your foreign gods and put on and we find them they hid it under the yoke tree that means they completely had a total objection or a total rejection of what they have possessed in their life there is something which we need to throw it off or keep it away from us so later they put on the new cloth and that's what expected from as as a, as if uh, jacob took the leadership in bringing out or setting an exemplary life to his family 
or to his children that we need to put away what we need to put away and we need to purify ourselves and we need to put on a new garment once you have put on it should be a complete objection of it a complete rejection of it not that we go back to and again do it and as uh, we all know that we mostly observe lenten time lenten time is a time we take more decisions in our life that throughout this day i will not okay so and so i will keep it away but the thing is after the period of time we like same like jacob as he was sleeping on that stone kept as a stone as a pillow and slept off with the, his the promises but later he never realized but until when god asked him to go back to bethel in similar way we also forget what we have taken in our decisions in our lives and then we don't have again we go back to the thing this is not that what god expects from us as a people of god flock of christ when we put away something it should be a complete rejection of it not that we turn back to it because it can harm again in our lives and that is what exactly and when you find in jacob's life through later you find he has been blessed he got a position he got an inheritance and even his name has been changed and the we can find a person with lots of deceptions lot of failures lot of uh, uh, ill feelings from others whom he got but when he turned back to god God has blessed him and when he put away the things what he has to put on, uh, put away and when he put on a new attitude or a new conduct in his life God has blessed him with the blessings that he has given to his ancestors and this is not for Jacob's life alone I think Jacob's life it was the foreign gods for Jacob life it was what they possessed was foreign gods but what as a church as collectively we think in our lives or as an individual what we think in our life what we need to put away in our life are we stuck with something or are we stagnated with something where do we have to move away what we need to put away in our lives is it our anchor is it our power in the position is it our power in the in the money or is it some our uh, the uh, way, the way that we slander others or the way we hate others the way we uh, enmity on others whatever that is being a stumbling block in our lives what we need to put away let's ask god to help each one of us to put away the things that what god don't want us to have in our lives for jacob it could be foreign gods but for us there would be several other things that we can find in our lives no matter every human has lots of weaknesses in our life but it's not that we cling on to the weaknesses but we how we make an effort in changing and purifying ourselves and then we coming with a put on a new thing so when we are having a change we try to opt for a change let us ask god to have a complete rejection of it how jacob completely rejected the foreign gods under the oak tree in the same way let's ask god to help each one of us as a people of god flock of christ it also gives us an assurance that when we are with a badge of failures with a badge of humiliations but god is there when we turn back to god when we go back to god and put away the things what we have in our lives god will not let us to be stuck to something but he will make a stream that ever flowing it sh- we should be a thing that it will be where our uh, promises of god has been fulfilled in our lives if jacob's life when the first time when he was in bethel he used the stone as a pillar and he was sleeping but when god asked him he made it as a as a place as a place to remind his memories how god has talked to him in the same way but it is not that there are several times like jacob we might be keeping several of our things under the pillow we have forgotten several our promises we have forgotten several of our there are times that we are being failed in our lives there are times we are being filled with grief there are times that we are being changed but if the pillar of stone on has to be changed as a powerful witness we need to experience god in our lives we need to experience god 
the way it is not just about the knowledge of god i think all of us have the knowledge of god everybody has of the knowledge of god but how can we know god in our lives how can we experience him in our lives that is through our personal relationship in our the way that how we being in our family the way that that is a kind of a process that it has to be happen uh, day by day and it should be always a progressive uh, thing that we need to happen in our life and that's what exactly when we uh, in jacob's life also shows to us there is a progressive development sometimes we uh, there are certain promises or certain uh, dreams that we have in our life we kept it under the pillow and we forget it but law, god's uh, promise to jacob talks that we need to take a new direction you have to depart from where you are stuck with and you have to take a new direction that can change change all our destination and that's what jacob's life and his family life is talk about there is a complete uh, change of their destination that we find in it where they possess the greatest inheritance of god and the blessings from the lord and that's what the life of jacob when god talks to us i think there are certain times we will be like as in psalms talks about we will be hard in our hearts like a uh, meriba the people in meriba and massa if we harden our hearts then we will be always going astray we find the people of israelites being under the 40 years where they are being astrayed at the same time that the the life of jacob talks to us we have to turn back not to harden our hearts not to be stuck or not to be stagnant but we have to put away the things and put on a new garment in inheriting the greatest possessions what god has kept each one of us and that is the first thing that we can find from the passage in the old testament coming back to the the next passage which talks about the the uh, the sheep i think the powerful imagery of the sheep and the the voice of the master or the sheep or the person who comes through the gate and it is very clear to all of us from our childhood the story of it uh, a person comes a uh, sheep the master the shepherd will come only through the gate the im- and he will never come in a wrong direction a straight forward imagery that where you always find the straight forward con- uh, concept that you find about the sheep and the shepherd imagery but when we find in the passage we find that the sheep always identifies the master's voice so the second point is if uh, for jacob the god asked to build a space of altar in the same way the second thing that i would like to share is how you identify the spokesperson's voices the voice of the or the sound of the of the of the spokesperson if you find in the john's gospel you can find the sheep identifies the master's voice in today's context we live with uh, there are several spokespersons there are several voices that you find in our lives you find uh, if for example like uh, in the advertisement even the product is very worst i think the way they how are uh, they advertise whether they can convince you with their words they can convince with your with the the products the glittery image that outwardly how it is and it is the same thing and we live in the image of various voices the voice is comes not just from our friends it is not just come from our uh, our own nearby ones but it also comes with the online platforms online medias today we are being and there are times when we we can also fall into the danger it is same like how jacob went to his uh, uh, went to his father with the clothing of uh, with the fur to show that he is isau in the same way today's voices comes with a sheep of clothing the clothing that is like a sheep but with a kind of coming to devour you to destroy you but it, it the way how the sheep identify is the master's voice i think we also need to identify the true voices that comes there will be several spokesperson there will be several voices but to identify the truth identify the right voice and how it has a positive effect upon us or it can have a negative effect upon us is is in our hand to discern ourselves 
if the things which comes to comes with a sh- uh, very glittery way with a good voice but having a deceptive nature within it i think it can loot you it can leave you and it, it can make you to be lost and i think it is not just we always tell our kids to make good friends if not you will end up in danger but i think it is for all of us i think not just for the kids alone we are into the online medias and the platforms and especially during the covid time i think we have also a uh, several ways it is not just about the the, uh, uh, the even religious things we can hear several of the preachings several ways the word of god in is been shared but what is truth in it is it basic to the the word of god i think that is where we have to discern ourselves there are several interpretations comes based on the word of god but is that the uh, interpretation accurate for us is it something beneficial for us or is it something distorting the truth from the word of god that is what exactly we need to look we have to go back to the word i think this bible should be our source of basis there will be several spokesperson there will be several interpretations but how what is the basic truth i think we when we rely on the basic truth of it i think god can help you to move away from the the voices which is deceiving thing the voices or the interpretations which comes with lots of glitters and which comes with a kind of a very deceptive nature we can move away only once your foundation in the word of god is true and that can help you and that can help you in the progress of our life and that is what exactly i find the sheep shepherd imagery when i find in the john's gospel how can we identify the true voice is that voice have something a positive effect on me or is it something that is having a negative effect on me or to loot me or to destroy me and that's what we have to analyze we should ask god or ask god to have that discerning capacity in knowing what is truth and identifying the basic truth in it and i am sure just for an example that we find we find cain and abel story where uh, they brought both of them brought the sacrifices but you find that there are some people who interpret it, it like cain brought the worst ones or the old bad vegetables but uh, uh, abel bought the best one but i think the text doesn't talk about it text only says that they brought the offerings one is from the vegetable and another one is the lamb only it says that one is with the blood and another is bloodless there are nothing else that it is bad or it is worse nothing written but it always look if you look back to first samuel 16 it says that god looks at the heart of the offering probably that could be the way how abel's offering was accepted and cain's was rejected it is not the matter of outward thing that what you brought but it may could be the inner heart but there are several times the interpretations comes in the way that the vegetables are were bad one he brought he just casually brought it and but abel brought the best one but it is always for us when you have find the interpretations which goes against the word it is always letting us to go back uh, to the word and i w- Uh, identify what is truth in it it is not that distorting the truth you can un- unravel the hidden things the interpretations from the word but you can never distort what is being in the text i think this is just a simple example that i shared just to identify uh, to make us to realize how the, the spokesperson's voices or interpretations can destroy you or can lead you to in a positive effect so let's as the people of god the flock of christ it's not just building of an altar when we build an altar also it's our one of the characteristic features that we need to identify is how we identify the spokesperson's voices the third thing that i would like to share obviously the passage that has been read to us is from the conversion of paul but i think uh, in the lectionary it is about the acts chapter 16 it talks about the conversion of lydia no matter what uh, i think the passage talks about we can find whether it is paul or whether it is lydia both of them had a collective responsibility you find in the life of paul when god's christ spoke to him 
and uh, when he was persecuting the church when christ spoke to him later his life has changed where he had a collective responsibility in sharing the word to the people and he has planted several churches in the similar way we can find even from acts chapter 16 verses 11 to 15 where you find about the conversion of lydia where you where we find Paul and Silas was on their missionary journey as they were on the missionary journey they were finding a space for uh, or sharing the gospel and you find Paul Paul is a person who always look for a synagogue to share the word but the place where he they came was it was philippi a roman colony where the roman soldiers who inhabited there and also you find uh, the place where uh the people who are loyal to rome they settled there and he could not find a place a synagogue there to share the word of god but at the same time he went back to the if you see acts chapter 11 uh, uh, sorry 16 11 to uh, 15 he goes back to the river side where he find lydia and some other women and then share the gospel and if you see the life of paul or if you see the life of lydia they had a site of service their service was not just for when they know christ when they identified christ in their life when they have changed in their life they did not kept the knowing of god the knowledge of that god within themselves but they have taken the responsibility of their own uh, people or their own households people and it, if you see the life of lydia she was a purely business woman she we know that she sold the purple dye and which was one of the costliest trade during those time and then we can find it that she is going to a, due to her trade she comes back to philippi and where she met paul when she met paul and a religious woman probably she was uh, a, a greek though a greek woman with her religious city probably she might have converted to judaistic faith following the judaistic thing that could be the reason she was easily able to to hear paul's thing and then she asked Paul to come back to her family and stay with them and later you find where even her household the whole of them were being baptized so a purely a business woman but she was also a religious woman where she able to accept and identify the word identify the truth and that has also her collective responsibility her faith, her faith has led even her family or the household to be baptized and even the life of paul also were though he is a jew and when later he has turned to christ where his life has turned many people to come to christ and the it is what that expects from the the people of god as a flock of christ it is what it is that what expects from all of us to our faith and our thing when we know god when we experience god it is not just to hide ourselves within us but it is how we share and how we help others how we influence others in a positive way in knowing god and they had a site of service though lydia was a very professional woman a, uh, a woman with a the good business uh, thing but she had a foresight of service and that is what led her to call paul and silas to her home and today's passage the uh, just talk to each one of us from the life of jacob from the life of paul or from the life of lydia it takes that uh, god is not asking us to be stuck or to be stagnated god asks each one of us to put away the things that we have to put away and be, where we have to purify ourselves let us purify ourselves and put on the new garment when we put on the new garment let that be the, the complete rejection of the things what we are putting away not that again we go back and take it when we rely on god irrespective of our failures irrespective of our grief irrespective of our pains when we rely on god the the jacob's life talk to each one of us that like the pillow that he was used as a place for uh, sleeping but that p- pillow has turned to the pillar of witness later in the in the place of bethel in the same way the failures the humiliations the grief the the lack of confidence within us 
us and the way that we are trying to find a new direction in our life where we wanted to depart from certain things ask god to help us and i think the life of jacob the life of lydia talks to each one of us when we rely on god we can have a new direction it can change all our destination same like jacob and we can possess the greatest promises of god and inherit what god has blessed in each one of us to that for to possess what god wants us to have it is always needed for us not to be hard in our hearts but change our path and uh, not like the people of meriba or maza but change our heart and take a complete change where god can help you and the thing it says that we also need to identify the voices that is being emits us there are several voices that comes to us there are several spokespersons comes to us but as people of god we need to identify what is the basic truth is the truth is distorting from the thing or is it comes with a glitter later it doesn't have any effect on us when you are uh, when our foundation is rooted in the truth no matter what happens in our lives no matter how many preachings that we hear all the preachings can go away from our mind but the truth is the one which always can hold you at times of your need at times of your pain at times of your grief at times where you need god's consolation so identify or discern the true voice the true voice of your master from the word and i discern the interpretations that comes to us in various forms and in various ways that can help you not to be destroyed not to be looted not to leave you or lost you but to help you in if you identify and discern the truth that can help you in a positive effect where you have a real progression in your life and the third thing it also talks about we need to have a sight of service not that our experience in knowing god is to keep within us but we have a social responsibility we have a social responsibility in taking the faith to the people who are needed we need the people who needed the comfort from the lord the people who need to experience god in their lives we have the social responsibility like lydia and paul to make others to be firm in god's word and may this word bless each one of us let's look to the lord in prayer gracious lord we thank you for this beautiful day that you had given to us to be in your presence with your word we pray o oh lord as there are several failures there are several humiliations there are times their grief comes upon us there are times that we are being stuck and stagnated we pray o oh lord may you be upon us help us o oh lord to find depart from the things what we need to depart to purify ourselves and to put on the new garment where we can also have like jacob to have a new destination in our lives we seek you o oh lord where we need your hand where we need your power, uh, your direction in our lives same like jacob lord we ask you to talk to us may the things that we have been forgotten in our lives the promises that we have been forgotten may turn to be the powerful witness as today as we go back to the memories as we go back to the promises that god gives to us oh lord we pray oh lord help us to identify the several voices and the interpretations that comes to us help us to know the hidden truth in, our, in the word and help us also to have a foresight where we also help others in knowing and experiencing you a more and more in our lord letting others also to come into your path we pray oh lord help us and guide us as we continue to worship you may your spirit be continuously be upon us in jesus name we pray amen thank you i take this opportunity to thank pastor mrs sindhu basi paul for sharing an inspiring message with us this morning once again i would like to remind you that 31st july 2022 will be marriage sunday as we all know that we as god has joined all of us together in the holy sanctuary we request all the families to kindly come in your wedding attire if it fits you or you can also come with suits and your uh Uh, saris or whatever that fits you well 
So we request you all to kindly be prepared for the 31st Sunday where we would be celebrating Marriage Sunday after which we will be joining in a family retreat. Uh, the place of the retreat will be announced soon. Once again, we would like to thank Pastor Mrs. Sindhu Basipal for sharing an inspiring message with us this morning. Thank you. Now we have a special song by Mr. George Uncle. I shall be singing a small Malayalam devotional song. This is a song especially particularly suited for people like me suffering from pains of shedding tears and work and wishing to be in the eternal home with the Lord Jesus. The prayer song says, Lord Jesus, when will my tears cease? Lord Jesus, when will my pains come to an end? Lord, in times of trouble, save me by your help and grace. I realize that I have nothing in this world which is my own. I am but a foreigner in the land of the living and a stranger here. I am yearning to reach the country of rest and to be with you, Lord. Do not, Lord, delay my departure as my failing strength is too little for my continuance in this world. Now the song. In this song, Kandinir means tears and Vedanagal means uh, the pains. Kannu nirannu marumo Vedana kal yannu thirumo Kannu nirannu marumo Vedana kal yannu thirumo Kashta padin kalangalil Rashipanai ni varane Kasapadin kalangalil Rashipanai ni varane Kannu nir yannu marumu Vedana kal yannu thirumu Parane 
വിശ്രമം നാട്ടിൽ ഞാൻ എത്തുവാൻ വെമ്പൽ കൊള്ളുന്നേ പറഞ്ഞേ വിശ്രമം നാട്ടിൽ ഞാൻ എത്തുവാൻ വെമ്പൽ കൊള്ളുന്നേ ഒട്ടും താമസം വെക്കല്ലേ നിൽപ്പാൻ ശക്തി തല്ലുമില്ലേ ഒട്ടും താമസം വെക്കല്ലേ നിൽപ്പാൻ ശക്തി തല്ലുമില്ലേ കണ്ണു നീ എന്നു മാറുമോ വേദന തീരുമോ കണ്ണു നീ എന്നു മാറുമോ വേദന എന്ന് തീരുമോ താങ്ക് യു I take this opportunity to thank uh, Mr. George Ankur for singing a melodious and uh, very beautiful song to us this morning. George Ankur is the senior most member of our church. Once again, I would like to extend heartfelt thanks to him and the entire family. Thank you, Ankur. Now, let us continue to praise God by singing hymn number 300 89 during which offering shall be collected Oh, we may receive 
general offerings we have special thanks offering from anna sabari rajan uh, especially thanking god for the mighty healing and recovery from covid we pray that god would strengthen you continue to be with you and grant you complete health we also have special thanks offering from telma swarna kumari uh thanking god for all the blessings and grace that they and their family received from almighty god we pray that god would continue to shower his countless blessings upon thelma swarna kumari amma and their family members as their eldest son prepares himself for the holy matrimony We also have special thanks offering from Mrs and Mr K Solomon Raju and family for all the blessings and loving kindness they receive from God. We pray that God would shower his countless blessings upon the family and continue to use them as a mighty instrument in his ministry. We also we also have special thanks offering from Anurag Vijay Kumar for all the blessings that he and his entire family receive from god we pray that god would shower his countless blessings upon anurag vijay kumar who is in abroad we also pray for his entire family who are present over here we also have special thanks offering from mr b john kennedy paul a pastor at steward thanking god for all the blessings that he and his family received from god we pray that god would shower your count shower his countless countless blessings upon you and your family and continue to use you as a mighty instrument in his ministry let us pray Holy Father who through the blood of thy dear son has consecrated for us a new and living way to thy throne of grace we come to thee through him unworthy as we are and we humbly beseech thee to accept and use us and these are gifts for thy glory all that is in heaven and earth is thine and of thine own do we give to thee amen
for the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of God's holy churches, and for the union of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For our bishops and all other ministers, especially our moderator and our bishop, the moderator of the Church of North India, and the Metropolitan of the Marathoma Church, that with a good heart and a pure conscience they may accomplish their ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. For the rulers of our country and all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. <coughs> For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor, the hungry, orphans and widows, and them that suffer persecution, let us pray to the Lord. For ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of Him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. That with all his servants who have served him here and are now at rest, we may enter into the fullness of his unending joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful way that you have led us in this entire worship service. Today, Lord, we also pray for all the people who have lost many things during this last week in the heavy rains and floods. Many parts of our nation, many parts of our country, many parts of our states and other states as they have faced severe problems, loss of life and loss of everything. We pray that you would bless them, be with them and guide them. We also pray for all the students who are writing their neat examination today. Lord, we pray that you would anoint them with your wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Let them write their examination with the great confidence. And Lord, we pray that you would grant them success in their examination. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, who knowest our necessities before we ask, and our ignorance in asking, we beseech thee to have compassion upon our infirmities and those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we, we cannot ask, vouchsafe to give us for the worthiness of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with all of us, both now and forevermore. The people of God, as we all know, that a Holy Bible was presented to our congregation by Mrs. Judith Marilyn Gardner in remembrance of our father, Eugene Edwards. Uh, this was presented to Reverend Moses Shanti Kumar Sangha. On behalf of the entire congregation, we would like to remember and thank the services and the worshipper. Mr. Eugene Edwards and uh, Judith Marilyn Gardner for the immense contribution that they have contributed to the Holy Sanctuary. And we would also like to remember our dear pastor who served in this church, Reverend Moses Sangha. Almost, I think, this uh, Bible was presented during his period. We thank God for the immense uh, grace that he showered upon the entire family. Thank you very much. And we would also like to thank uh, Reverend you, Daniel Aigaru, uh, for, uh, uh, for again uh, restoring the Bible and presenting it to the Holy Sanctuary. We that do truly and earnestly repent of our sins and are in love and charity with our neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, let us draw near with hate and take this holy sacrament to our comfort and let us make a humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon our knees. Almighty God, Father of Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all human beings, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are hearty Sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of His great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith 
turn unto him have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through jesus christ our lord amen the words of encouragement hear what comfortable words of our savior christ saith unto all that truly turn to him come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life hear also what saint paul saith this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that christ jesus came into the world to save sinners if any man sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous and he is the propitiation for our sins lift up your hearts we lift them up unto the lord let us give thanks unto our lord god it is meet and right to do therefore with angels it is very meet right and bound in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto the o lord holy father almighty and everlasting god therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven We laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of thy glory be to thee o lord most high amen let us all join in saying the prayer of humble approach in unison We do not presume to come this thy table of merciful Lord trusting in our own righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercy we are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs of thy table but thou art same Lord whose property is always to have mercy grant us thy for gracious Lord so to eat the flesh of thy dear son Jesus Christ and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us amen, amen. almighty god our heavenly father who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only son jesus christ to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again here as a merciful father we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine according to thy son our savior jesus christ holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood our lord jesus christ who in the same night that he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink ye all of this for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for you as for many for the remission of sins do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me amen
Draw near with faith, receive the body of Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts with faith and thanksgiving.
those who are unable to come to the altar to receive the holy communion i request you to kindly raise your hand yeah yeah Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father. We, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most, bese most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by thy merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, 
we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will to God's name. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee. We give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. God that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. God that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. The peace which passeth all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst us and remain with us always. Let us continue to praise God by singing hymn number 513, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. Hymn number 513.
so Jesus said, Come unto me and rest. Let the weary one let down the head of my breast. To Jesus as I was, weary and sad, I found in Him a resting place, and He has made me glad. The war so Jesus say Behold I freely give The living water The stay one Stop down and drink and To Jesus and I track of the life in stream. My thoughts was quenched, so reward, and now I live in Him. So Jesus said, I this dog was light. Look unto me, thy morn shall rise, and all thy day be To Jesus, and I found in my star, my son, and in that light of love, I walk to traveling death, Satan. The Spirit, in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <clears throat>